cave paintings and petroglyphs are undoubtedly some of the oldest and most interesting artworks found anywhere on Earth. Some of these artworks, found within the unforgiving terrain of the Great Outback within Australia, for example, have been dated at well over 10,000 years old. Illustrations in ochre that show many of the animals our distant ancestors loved or hunted, along with many other forms of artistic recreation. Like a time capsule allowing us to travel back, to peek into the minds of ancient man. Although these ancient artworks are undoubtedly important to our understanding of ancient man, there exists a number of other petroglyphs that are considerably different to these primitive achievements. Found within the White Mountain of Wyoming, there are a number of petroglyphic carvings that were seemingly made with nothing else than our ancestors' hands. These deep-set handprints were somehow left within solid sandstone, as if created by softening the rocks with their minds, hands, or perhaps voices alone. How did an ancient people manage to create these marks? Did our ancient ancestors somehow figure out how to soften stone? There are many sites all around the world which possess similarly enigmatic marks. Were they left by individuals capable of softening stone, or perhaps left upon the stones while not fully formed? To melt or soften stone requires immense heat, that which is usually only found within the center of the earth, or indeed the lava flows which spew forth from its core. One interesting theory regarding the possible softening of stones, created far back within antiquity, was initially discovered still been surviving within the minds of locals who surround the ancient sites of Peru, most notably Sacsayhuaman. A theory put forth to explain the shaping of stones within the fortress, regarded as a local legend by the first explorers of these sites. Percy Fawcett, as well as Hiram Bingham, who actually rediscovered Machu Picchu, noted that it was a liquid derived from plants, which was apparently known to the ancients to turn stone soft. In fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest attested to using the technique, actually achieving the softening of solid stones, although he was apparently unable to return the resulting flurry back to solid stone. Furthermore, according to other researchers, Jan Peter de Jong, Christopher Jordan, and Jesus Gamera, among others, ancient walls within Cusco show evidence that ancient cultures used very high temperatures to shape them. This unknown process vitrified the surface of the blocks, turning them to glass. Based on these observations, Jong, Jordan, and Gamera speculated that ancient man possessed an advanced device which somehow allowed them to melt stone blocks. And although the petroglyphs of the White Mountains are yet to be fully studied by anyone, we feel they are probably the strongest piece of evidence of this lost process. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. When it comes to the particular ancient uparts that we share, which have a simply impossible age, this, in regard to the modern chronological paradigm of man's historical origins, in which man evolved from the sea to the cave and then into modern civilization, in a supposedly already mapped out and fully understood linear fashion with no gaps whatsoever. A position made to attain undeserved authority over historical teachings. Thus, when an object turns up which contests these so-called already established factual ideologies, it is either simply dismissed, or those who oppose such possibilities of its existence go to great length to discredit its authenticity in any way. Furthermore, it must be mentioned that many more than could be contributed to coincidence have mysteriously disappeared over the years, scenarios, and events which simply strengthen the original claims of the object's authenticity. Our next artifact of interest being no exception. Known as the Meister print, 
It is an artifact that many have attempted to discredit as an authentic human footprint for good reason. And when one recites the academic opposed theory regarding the dismissal of said hypothesis of human origin, it exposes how miserably said attempt was. It is simply written off as a portion of Jurassic strata, at which at some point in the distant past naturally fractured coincidentally into the form of a human-shaped shoe print. However, this explanation or attempted dismissal avoids any attempt to explain away the main feature within the print, which not only proves it was indeed a print once made by induced pressure onto this ancient earth, but why it's claimed as an oopart in the first place. Within the print, there exists a crushed trilobite, which proves this was indeed a pressed print, but also confirms an age of hundreds of millions of years. Thus, whatever made this print had a human-shaped foot, was seemingly wearing shoes or boots, and was heavy enough to crush an ancient arthropod. These facts, along with academia's miserable attempt to dismiss said upart, we therefore find highly compelling. Known as the Goliath Footprint, it is located near the village of Lothair, in the Grass and Wetlands District, Mpumalanga, South Africa. Among one of the most intriguing found all over the world, these curious features raised up from the Earth's strata due to geological activity, their resemblance to giant human feet uncanny, their abundance compelling. Some think it's real, while others simply dismiss it as pareidolia. Ancient giants, a subject many people categorize as fantasy, originating from stories once told around ancient campfires, also featured in many religious texts, most notably David and Goliath. Very few stories stand the tests of time, but the few that do often carry a message or several messages perfectly eloquent and profoundly inspiring and a kernel of truth. To us, giants are a subject that, due to the fields of antiquity we study, we have come across countless reports, testimonies, and newspaper articles pertaining to their accidental discovery. We have research places where people have found, exhumed, and photographed many ancient giants, thus even a confirmed location of more. Yet most intriguingly, the repeated mention of the Smithsonian Institution's rapid arrival and involvement with every site. One must at least give the Institute credit when it came to their tremendous efforts and ability to make these finds and indeed reports of the findings of the discovery just vanish from historical record. Only the initial reports, cast in stone in library archives, thus just out of the reach of their clutches remain. There are, to our own personal convictions, three confirmed recordable races of giants. One of found with six fingers and toes. The moon-eyed people, as they were often known within Peru, identified due to exhibiting two rows of teeth, though it is unknown if these were shared by others. And red-haired giants, whose whereabouts within modern historical accounts with a smorgasbord of folklore, one told of their final execution and subsequent extinction during a fire in a cave in Scotland. An eerie giant handprint can be seen on a cave stone, and several unusual large artifacts were recovered, though we believe they may be lost. Is the Goliath footprint true? Will the truth ever be revealed? What is the Smithsonian hiding? We find it all highly compelling. Hey guys, so today I wanted to share with you a rather special out-of-place artifact. It's known as the Fisher Canyon footprint, and it's actually a lump of coal. However, this small lump of coal is something very special. It's an artifact we hold dear to our hearts here at Mystery History. 
Since its discovery in the early 1900s by a man named John T. Reed, a character we have actually covered in the past, it has been silencing skeptics and evolutionists the world over. John T. Reed was the man responsible for confirming native Indian legends of a race of red-headed giants that once terrorized the American continent some 13,000 years ago. When John found the Fisher Canyon footprint, he reported it to the New York Sunday American. The coal layer in which the fossil was found was dated at over 15 million years ago. Microscopic photography that was carried out by the Rockefeller Institute, presumably attempting to discredit the find, actually confirmed that it was indeed a heel print of a hand-stitched shoe, and that the fossil seemed to show the presence of two rows of stitches along the edge of the sole, with twists of thread clearly visible in the photography. The right side of the shoe also appeared more worn than the left, indicating that it was worn on the right foot. Crystals of mercury sulfide, collected during the analysis, only confirmed the fossilized shoe print's enormous age. After the test results were in, Samuel Hubbard of the Museum of Archaeology in Oakland, California, buckled to the sheer amount of conclusive evidence by telling the press, quote, Today's people are not yet able to make this kind of shoe. Facing this kind of evidence indicates that at the time of suspected uncivilized arthropods, millions of years ago people with high intelligence appear to have existed. Detail of the threads proves that it was the sole of a shoe and was strictly the handiwork of man." End quote. This is why we love the Fisher Canyon footprint so much. It sat in the back of museum collections for years, silently waiting for evolutionists and skeptics alike to stumble upon its existence only for it to then cast its spell of tremendous doubt upon their way of thinking. They can produce no real explanation for it. The best any mainstream scientists or anthropologists can do is ignore the evidence and conclude it's just a natural formation. Unfortunately, the footprint conveniently went missing a few years ago, even though by all accounts it was just a lump of coal. The story has also been hijacked over the years, with the Rockefeller Institute's test results subsequently vanishing. However, luckily for us, the quotes by Hubbard are in press archives all over the world. This small lump of coal is sure to fuel the argument for years to come.
We have in the past covered the fascinating fossilized footprints of apparent ancient giants that may have once roamed our Earth. These prints, undoubtedly of a tremendous age, a timeline and existence which flies in the face of current teachings. Along with these giant prints, we have also touched upon the baffling, seemingly melted handprints found upon stones within Wyoming. Yet one area of fossilized prints which have seemingly slipped through our radar until they were recently brought to our attention is the vast array of extremely ancient human-sized prints found throughout the world. In this segment, we will specifically focus upon those found within St. Louis, firstly due to their remarkable nature, but also due to a curious letter received by a fellow of similar interests recorded by William R. Corliss in his source book, Volume Strange Artifacts, sent in 1837 by an English geologist. It read as follows, quote, Lest I should again neglect to call your attention to a subject to which I have long since intended to claim your particular regard, I will in this brief space allude to it. In the fifth volume of your journal, 1822, there are remarks on the prints of human feet observed in the secondary limestone of the Valley of the Mississippi by Mr. Schoolcraft and Mr. Benton, with a plate representing the impressions of two feet. Ever since my researches on ripple sandstones, published in Jameson's Edinburgh Journal, I felt persuaded the prints alluded to were the genuine impressions of human feet made in the limestone when wet. I cannot go on with the arguments that may be urged in proof of my opinion, but rely upon it. Those prints are certain evidence that man existed at the epoch of the deposition of that limestone, as the birds that lived when the new red sandstone was formed. Get all the evidence on this head you can, rely upon its most important results will be its consequence. He continued, his fellow friend Sir Woodbine Parrish, who was seemingly an English knight of the realm, was familiar with other prints. Quotes, Tells me of similar impressions which have been seen in South America, and there was a dispute among the top Catholic sects as to whether they were the prints of the apostles themselves. End quote. These mountains of accounts and actual physical proofs that man may be very much older than currently argued, we not only found seemingly overwhelming, but certain individuals' denial of such highly compelling. 